Hello, I'm Daniel, and welcome to the Imuna Project. We here at the Imuna Project are continuing in our series of videos with respect to information, education, inspiration, guidance, advice to uh, converts to Judaism, uh, B'nai Noach, uh, the Noahides, and of course the Bali Tshuva, Jews who have uh, not had the benefit of Jewish education or have strayed and are now coming back. In uh, recent previous videos, I made mentions of the Tochacha, the uh, admonitions contained in Leviticus uh, 26 and Deuteronomy 28. And I want to go and continue with another verse from the second Tochacha, the 28th chapter of the book of Deuteronomy, uh, verse 47. It says something very unusual that catches your eye. Because you did not serve Hashem your God with gladness and goodness of heart, when everything was abundant. Again, we're talking about the curses that are befalling the Jewish people when they abandon God, when they, you know, they don't follow the commandments. Here, we're talking about someone who um, didn't serve Hashem, God, with gladness and goodness of heart. So the Torah is emphasizing that one of the reasons that, God forbid, these curses befall us is not only that people don't command, do commandments, that people don't perform mitzvahs. Those who do the mitzvahs aren't doing them with sufficient uh, simcha, without sufficient uh, happiness, gladness, uh, joy. This is, to me, puzzling. Imagine someone, a from Jew, an observant person, who is very meticulous and very scrupulous about doing commandments exactly right. He gets like the challah for Shabbos, and he gets the candles and the wine. He says, he says the brachas perfectly. He does make sure that everything is just right for, you know, the covet Shabbos Kodesh, the honor, the glory of the Holy Sabbath. But he lacks happiness. He's not doing it with the proper joy because of this guy. He suffers curses, the Jewish people suffers curses because he's not happy enough. There's something puzzling here. It, um, it was uh, Rav Soloveitchik, M.D. Soloveitchik, um, who distinguishes between two types of sin, two types of sinners. One is the person who sins, who transgresses, and is remorseful. He does chuva. He knows that he did something wrong and he regrets it. Uh, he fell into the clutches of the Yetzirah, he gave into temptation and evil inclination. In such a case, the hope is that with his remorse, with his repentance, comes Chuva. Remember, Chuva is a process. It's not just saying, I'm sorry, God, let me off the hook. It's a process. When someone is remorseful, that's an important element of Chuva. That remorse spurs you. To, to do uh, a tshuva shlema, a complete, a complete uh, tshuva. Unfortunately, we have the second type. The second type is a, a sinner who's really not all that concerned about his actions. As a matter of fact, even worse, he's kind of proud of it. You know, ah, look, I'm eating a, a bacon double cheese uh, burger in front of a shul on Yom Kippur. Aren't I great? You know, what a rebel. Um, such an individual has fallen into an abyss uh, that, God forbid, offers very little hope for him doing tshuva. This is not someone who feels sorry for what he's done. He's actually, in a very perverse way, proud of what he's done. With the above in mind, Harav, M.D. Soloveitchik, gives an interesting interpretation of this verse. It says, because you did not serve Hashem, your God, so how is this lack of service manifest? What did they do that was so bad? Well, with gladness of heart. He says, there was joy in your transgression. You got a kick out of being sinful. It gave you a thrill. 
like the person with the bacon double cheeseburger in front of the shul in Yom Kippur. He got a sick little pleasure from that, and it meant nothing to him. And in disobeying Hashem, in going against the laws of the Creator, he's created a, himself a, a situation that leaves very little hope for tshuva, for repentance, for turning himself around. When you go that low, the likelihood is substantially diminished. I never want to say that the person has no hope. There's always hope. There's always hope. But with a person that, that like that, is truva realistic? Well, if that's the kind of person that is forming the majority of the, of the Jewish people at the time, the curses will come and they will come fast and hard and heavy. But <clears throat> even in iniquity, even in sinful behavior, even in shocking behavior, there is always hope so long as the sinner is remorseful. <clears throat> as long as he moves from the second category into the first category. If someone who doesn't care says, you know what, I've been like a real jerk and uh, I think maybe I should uh, stop this behavior and maybe turn my life around. No matter how low you go in the depths, when you're crying out to God from the pit, there is still hope so long as there is repentance, so long as there is remorse, so long is tshuva. Never give up hope. You do never, 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 never consider that you've gone so low that you are beyond hope, beyond return, beyond repentance. There's always hope, as long as there's remorse. Uh, we're going to be doing more videos along these lines. I hope you're finding them of some inspiration. Um, as I've said in previous videos, the Yetzirah almost never comes at you directly. It comes at you at the side. And one of the ways is it causes you to give up hope. It, gov it causes you to feel like remorse is beyond your grasp. Don't listen. So long as you're remorseful, there's always hope. We're going to be doing more videos along these lines. Please come back. Please watch. Please learn. And until next time, on behalf of the Amuna Project, I'm Daniel, and thank you too much.